Hey everybody, this is Matt Atkinson, and you're watching Four Gettysburg with Aaron Smith. What is going on, everybody? Thank you guys so much for joining me for another episode of Forward Gettysburg. As always, I am your host, Aaron Smith. Guys, I cannot thank you enough for all the support on the channel. The subscriptions are through the roof. The watches are through the roof. The likes, the comments. It's been awesome. I'm so glad you guys are enjoying the content. As I always say, you guys keep watching. I'm going to keep making great Gettysburg content. So today, we are debunking probably the most popular myth, the most popular legend about the Battle of Gettysburg, and that is that the Battle of Gettysburg was fought over shoes. This myth has been so prevalent that it's been featured in all types of media, documentaries on TV, all kinds of stuff. Even the Ken Burns documentary in his great episode about the Battle of Gettysburg, he says, the Battle of Gettysburg was started over shoes. So this is probably one of the most prevalent myths, probably one of the most famous myths surrounding the Battle of Gettysburg. And the thing about this myth is that it's one of those things that sounds so ridiculous, one of those things that seems so crazy that the largest battle in the Western Hemisphere was fought over something as simple as shoes. Now let's be fair, shoes were an incredibly vital supply, not only to the Army of Northern Virginia, those troops under Robert E. Lee, but also for the troops of the North. Both armies went through shoes at an incredible pace. As you can imagine, these guys, you know, they weren't traveling in wagons. They weren't traveling on horseback. The infantry marched everywhere. And of course, if you're marching over all kinds of terrain, rocks, um, bad roads, mud, all kinds of stuff like that, you're going to go through shoes. Now, the Union, believe it or not, suffer from a lack of shoes just like the Confederates. However, the Confederates probably had a harder time at acquiring those supplies. One of those reasons, especially during the Gettysburg campaign, is that these rebel forces, they went from marching through the roads of the South, which at that time were these uh, very soft dirt roads. Yeah, it would rain and they would get muddy and stuff, but the roads weren't really paved. They didn't really have anything other than dirt on the roads. So marching on dirt or walking through dirt is, you know, much, much simpler than say walking on a macadamized road. And once the Army of Northern Virginia made its way to the north and crossed over the Mason-Dixon line, that's what they encountered. A lot of the major road networks in Pennsylvania were macadamized. Now, a macadam road is very similar to what a, a modern-day gravel road would look like. You know, it would have a lot of crushed stone. It was very, very resilient to the weather as well. You know, when it rained on these dirt roads in Virginia and in the south, you know, it could wash out the entire road. It would turn into a muddy, muddy mess. However, in the north, these macadamized roads, when the rain would come in, it would kind of wash off the road. It, it wouldn't really destroy the road or make it as unpassable as it would in the south. However, with better roads, comes more hardship upon the shoes of the soldiers. You know, if you didn't have shoes and you're marching on these macadam roads, it's kind of like you're walking on Legos. And everyone knows how terrible it is to step on a Lego in the middle of the night. There's been a thousand memes about it. Um, but if you can imagine being barefoot, walking on these rocky roads, like I don't even like to walk barefoot out on my driveway and that's a paved driveway let alone the gravelly parts along the side you know I, i'm a little sissy when it comes to that i'm not even gonna lie to you guys so i can only imagine what it's like to march you know dozens and dozens and dozens of miles with no shoes so yes the south as part of their invasion of the north they're looking for supplies and shoes definitely were a high priority on that list of supplies that they were looking for but I believe the myth of the shoes comes from Henry Heath's official report about the Battle of Gettysburg. I have volume two here of um, uh, actually volume 27, 
part two of the official reports. And Henry Heath's official report says, in fact, in the third paragraph, on the morning of June 30th, I ordered Brigadier General Pettigrew to take his brigade to Gettysburg, search the town for army supplies, parentheses, shoes especially, and return the same day. So we see how the myth of shoes came into being. And I'm, I mean, I get it. Early historians of the battle, early guides, uh, you know, early students of the battle. You read that report and you think, well, damn, battle started because of shoes. Henry Heath says so right in his report. But what I think a lot of people lose is that Henry Heath says they were looking for army supplies, not just shoes, especially shoes shoes especially, but army supplies in general. And that goes into the whole reason behind Lee's second invasion of the North, is that they're going to live off of the land. Lee was way, way too far from his supply line in Staunton, Virginia. I mean, by the time he's in Pennsylvania, he's got almost a hundred miles away. So it's not like he can easily get resupplied. So the plan was to live off of the land. A more important point, and something I think a lot of people get lost in, is they take this shoes, they take this one paragraph, um, actually the first sentence of the third paragraph of Henry Heath's report, and they run wild with it. When people ask, why was the Battle of Gettysburg fought? I feel like people take the easy way out and they go with the shoes myth. However, there's something far more important and something I alluded to at the beginning of this video of why the Battle of Gettysburg was fought. On June 30th, both armies were concentrating along the Pennsylvania-Maryland border, right around Carroll County, Frederick County, Adams County, York County. That entire area is where the two armies were essentially concentrated at. They were rather spread out within those four counties, but the entire Union and Confederate force on the East Coast, the two major armies on the East Coast, were in those four counties around the Mason-Dixon line. So when people ask why the Battle of Gettysburg was fought, shoes is the easy answer out. It's the easy way out. Rather, the more intricate, complex answer, the correct answer, is that the Battle of Gettysburg was fought because of the road network. If we take a look at a map of the location of the armies on June 30th, and the following map I'm going to show is from the Phil Lano map book, an excellent resource. I highly recommend everybody pick up your copy. It's a little bit on the expensive side, but you're getting 444 maps that explain in intricate detail troop positions, movements, um, actions for the entire Gettysburg campaign from the lead up after Chancellorsville all the way to Lee's retreat. So it's an excellent resource. I highly recommend everybody pick up a copy. But on the Phil Lano map book, which I'm going to have a screenshot of on screen here as I talk, we can see Robert E. Lee's forces. They are centered around Fayetteville, Chambersburg, Cash Town, um, and then we have Yule, whose forces are up to the north and to the east. Yule, of course, was near York, Pennsylvania at the time. He had made his way to Wrightsville. He was going to take the Columbia Wrightsville Bridge. Um, that failed. They burned the bridge down. I uh, have an episode about that if you guys want to check that out. It's a really cool spot to visit. So Yule's whole thing was he was going to try to take Harrisburg, but he's going to be recalled. So you have the Confederate Army spread out to the west, the north, and the east of Gettysburg. Now we have the Union armies after George Meade takes over for Joseph Hooker. Meade is going to start to concentrate his forces around Frederick, Maryland. And Meade is going to devise a plan called the Pipe Creek Line. And the Pipe Creek Line is essentially going to be a defensive position running all the way to the east in Manchester, Maryland, and going to the west toward an ending somewhere around Emmitsburg, Maryland. It's going to follow the Pipe Creek, which is a little stream that runs through northern Carroll County and into Frederick County. Not only that, but there's also a very 
um, easily defensible ridge line that runs right next to that creek. Um, in Carroll County, it's Pars Ridge. I believe it's called Pars Ridge in, in other parts near the Pipe Creek as well. Um, if you get onto a topographical view of Google Maps, uh, you know I love Google Maps, <laughs> but if you get onto a topographical view of Google Maps, you can see the elevation, and it's a fairly sizable elevation for that area. You're talking a thousand feet above sea level to 1200 feet above sea level for the mid-Atlantic. And we're not talking about Appalachia or, or anything like that, but for the mid-Atlantic, that's a pretty sizable rise and a fairly defensible position for Meade to use as a fallback position um, if he engages Robert E. Lee and things go south, no pun intended. So Meade is starting to concentrate his troops around this Pipe Creek line. But when we look at a map of Gettysburg, where Gettysburg is, is that it's nearly impossible to travel through South Central Pennsylvania in this area. We're talking Franklin County, Adams County, York County, Pennsylvania, Frederick County, Carroll County, Maryland. It's nearly impossible to travel through that area without having to go through Gettysburg. So it really was inevitable that these forces met at Gettysburg because of the road network. Now, Gettysburg has 10 major roads. And what I love about old timey roads and even roads to today is that they are named after where they go to. So in the south of Gettysburg, we have the Tawny Town Road. It runs the Tawny Town. We have the Baltimore Pike. The Baltimore Pike obviously runs to Baltimore. The Baltimore Pike and the Tawny Town Roads are going to be the two major roads that the Union controls throughout the Battle of Gettysburg. I've talked about it in some length on several of my Culp's Hill videos. The Baltimore Pike is the key artery for the Army of the Potomac. The Baltimore Pike not only leads to Baltimore, but then leads to Washington. The Tawny Town Road is important too because it essentially is going to run south to modern day 140, right outside of Westminster, and that's gonna end up going to Baltimore and Washington as well. Just make sure my flag's not falling down. You know, I, I tried to decorate the at-home studio. It's a rainy day today, but yeah, I can only do so much with a stone wall. So it is what it is. Moving to the southwest, we have the Emmitsburg Road, which runs to Emmitsburg. That area will also take you to Frederick, Maryland as well. That road will go directly to Frederick. As we continue to move to the west of town, we have the Fairfield Road, we have the Chambersburg Pike, and we have the Mummisburg Road. The Fairfield Road was also known as the Hagerstown Road as well. It's going to go to Hagerstown, and Hagerstown historically has always been a huge hub city for traffic, for goods, um, for railroads, all that kind of stuff. So Hagerstown is an important road as well. The Chambersburg Pike, that's the main route the Confederates are going to take into Gettysburg. The Chambersburg Pike obviously is going to run to Chambersburg, but it's also going to run to the Cumberland Valley, which is the Pennsylvania extension of the Shenandoah Valley, that natural highway nestled between two mountain ranges that Robert E. Lee used to just shoot his troops right up into Pennsylvania. And then we have the Mummisburg Road as well. That's going to be to the northwest of town. To the north of town, we're going to have the Carlisle Pike and also the Harrisburg Road. These are going to be roads that the Confederates take into town on day one. Um, obviously, the Carlisle Pike is going to lead to Carlisle, and then the Harrisburg Road is going to be um, a road that leads to the capital of Pennsylvania and almost runs parallel to modern-day Route 15. And then to the east of town, we are going to have the York Pike and we're going to have the Hanover Road. Now, the York Pike is going to lead to York, Pennsylvania, which was also a fairly important city in Pennsylvania at the time of the Civil War. There were several hospitals and army camps there in York. And then the Hanover Road, which is going to be the route that the Fifth Corps is going to take into town. They're going to come along the Hanover Road and turn off somewhere around the Low Dutch Road and then come around to the Tawny Town Road and take their positions that way around uh, July 2nd. So we see that Gettysburg is an essential nexus of all these roads and they all meet in town and they all go through town. So wherever these armies were, if they wanted to get to the north or to the south, they pretty much had to go 
through Gettysburg. I appreciate you all joining me today for today's episode. This was a pretty short one, but I think it was an important one and, and one that I've been wanting to talk about. I wanted to go into it in some depth. It wasn't necessarily short enough to make a short that did it justice, but not necessarily long enough for a full-blown forward Gettysburg episode. So it's a rather short one today. I wanted to get out to the battlefield, but it's been raining all day. It's muddy. It's gross. So we're doing it from the Forward Gettysburg studio today. Guys, I hope you had a wonderful Christmas holiday. I hope you're having a wonderful 2023. I, again, I, I can't believe all the support that the channel has been getting. I appreciate it immensely. Thank you guys so, so much. As always, I'm your host, Aaron Smith. This is Forward Gettysburg. And I will catch you on the next one.